in this section, I'm going to be talking about Muslim women and um, talk, talking about them uh, with reference to the Shabano case and, and the implications of this particular case for Muslim women's rights in, uh, in India. Now, uh, to start with, what's, what's important to, uh, to note is um, that in India, um, each religious community has personal laws that are uh, that are recognized, constitutionally recognized, uh, that allows uh, that community to um, to have uh, its own practices around marriage, around custody, around inheritance, um, and and. There is also simultaneously what's known as the Uniform Civil Code, which which uh, which is um, which which is a civil uh, law that that is free from uh, any kind of uh, religious inflections and and any anyone so anyone can get married under the Uniform Civil Code or under religious personal laws. Um, so so for instance. Uh, you have Muslim personal law, you have Hindu personal law, you have uh, Parsi uh, personal law, um, and and and, and uh, Christian personal laws, and each of each community then can can um, uh, have have uh, the have its uh, recognition of 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 its um, its own practices within within these laws. But if somebody wanted to get married under the Uniform Civil Uniform Civil Code, then then that would take precedence over the religious personal laws. So that's by way of a bit of a backdrop backdrop to this particular uh, verdict. Now, in 1985, um, the Supreme Court directed uh, Mohammed Ahmed Khan to pay Shabano um, an allowance, a maintenance allowance under Section 125 of the Criminal Procedure Code. Now. Uh, to explain this uh, again, you have you have to understand that um, under Muslim personal law, um, maintenance would only uh, maintenance post divorce would only be paid in in the first three months after after the divorce. After which uh, the 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 husband would no longer be liable for maintenance. Now Shabano was a penurious uh, old woman, a 69 year old woman, who uh, was being divorced by uh, Mohammed Ahmed Khan after 43 years of marriage. She had no no source of of, of income uh, and. Um, and and would therefore be left destitute uh, after the, after that three month period. Now, uh, section 125 of the Criminal Procedure Code is actually a section that um, that prevents vagrancy and begging. Uh, and 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 so what the Supreme Court was in effect doing was uh, finding a, a route out of. The, the stipulation of uh, Muslim personal law, which was, uh, which which doesn't allow for maintenance beyond that three month period, um, and and uh, uh, allowing uh, Shabano to receive a couple, a paltry couple of hundred uh, as as maintenance. Now, the it was this this judgment was was hailed as a, a triumph of justice a triumph of gender justice uh, you can you know, one can query how much of a triumph it is if if, if it's only a, a matter of a couple of hundred uh, which is which was certainly not enough to secure any kind of uh, Im, uh, economic independence for shabano uh, however uh, so it was it it, it was uh, hailed as a triumph of gender justice in, in in secular india at the time however the out Muslim clergy were outraged, um, and and they condemned uh, what they perceived as the Supreme Court's interference in uh, Muslim personal law. Now, what happened next was deeply regressive. In order to um, appease the uh, the Muslim electoral sentiment, uh, Rajiv Gandhi, the then Prime Minister, um, used. Uh, 
the majority of the Congress government in the Lok Sabha to nullify the uh, Supreme Court verdict by the enactment of the Muslim Women Protection of Rights on Divorce Act of 1986. Now, although it says uh, protection of rights, uh, it, 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 it does not indeed uh, protect the rights of, uh, of, of women. In fact, it sets aside the rights of divorced women to receive maintenance under Section 125 of the Criminal Procedure Code. Now, what's at issue here is, is in effect, uh, a contest between the rights of Muslim women as, uh, as citizens, as equal citizens, constitutional rights of, uh, for women, and which are coming into conflict with the rights of uh, Muslim, the Muslim community, to their own personal laws. Um, and within, and, and, and you know, uh, the other, other communities for instance, the Christians uh, may also, also do have similar similar kinds of debates ongoing, uh, and and there's there's been much discussion, heated discussion, on what would be the best way to uh, to advance the rights of Muslim women, uh, while at the same time not. Uh, not endangering uh, the rights of of the Muslim community, and and it, it, it's 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 quite a vexed, vexed issue, um, and one of the uh, more recent sort of positive uh, changes uh, that has has occurred uh, has been the. Um, uh, interpretation of the way of of the 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 in that period the maintenance period of three months when which is which is the the the, the period when uh, the the man is is supposed to pay um, pay maintenance to to his divorced wife uh, now recently a, a few courts have uh, come up with judgments that. Uh, stipulate the maintenance amount to be not just the maintenance for those three months, but but a larger amount that would <coughs> a, a larger amount that would cover the uh, a longer period of time and be a more substantial maintenance that would be granted to women. So so this is this is one of the, one of the sort of progressive uh, shifts in in the interpretation of the law that that has happened. But importantly, also uh, another shift that has happened since the 1980s, when the Shah Banu judgment was was uh, enacted, has been the emergence of uh, Muslim women's groups, uh, and these these women's groups are working within the the Muslim communities to to uh, to raise awareness uh, on on. Um, Rights, the concerns of Muslim women, and and engage in a dialogue with, uh, um, with the wider Muslim community within, with clerics, with uh, with men within the Muslim community, on um, on reforms from within, yeah, that are not not imposed by uh, by the state or by uh, other uh, by state state initiated legislation, uh, and these are some, these are some of the uh, shifts that we see today when when we're talking about Muslim women. Um, though you know it it, it is still uh, a very much uh, contested uh, area when we're when we're when we're looking at uh, the rights of Muslim women uh, in in the Indian context.